morning. Good morning. Good morning. If I had to take a special class on bell ringing. <laughs> Sounds nice though. Mm -hmm. uh, some changes today. Our music uh, canvas is out today. Um, you know, help things happen to folks, and most of the time it's easy enough to just kind of get through it saying, well, you know, it's bad weather this, bad weather that, or uh, especially with the illness now, we don't even know why somebody's going to be out sick. You know, I mean, shoot, now we got to worry about the monkey pox. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it bad enough? <laughs> we don't need to worry about the monkey pox. <clears throat> and Barbara, I am glad to see you. Glad to be back. I'm glad to see you because you're feeling better. <laughs> you know, not just because you do a lot of stuff that gets done, because you do. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, uh, Glad to have you. <clears throat> we'll be doing our uh, evening service on Wednesday this week, and we're going to be doing the readings that are coming up. It's not the ones we just did. We're going to focus on the readings that are coming up for the next Sunday. And uh, I don't remember who suggested that, but that makes a lot of sense to me. Was it you? Okay, I, got to, I have this list. It says John gets a credit, Barbara gets credit, Nancy gets a credit. Um, and I'm kidding, of course, I don't have a list, except maybe I did. Um, here we are. For two together in my name there and I also. Right? So we're gonna get along with this and uh, I'm uh, wondering if there are any other announcements out there. Anybody got any announcements that they feel like they they need to make? Um, yeah. Pride Mass is going to be Friday, June 3rd okay. at St. James, 6.30. Yeah. That's a diocesan-sponsored event. Okay. Cool. Okay. cool. Friday, June 3rd. All right. Um, 5th of June is Pentecost, and I'll be doing that service, and I'm going to try to get um, somebody in to help us with that, somebody to do the Eucharist. And uh, we'll see how, see how that goes. But we'll be uh, de dealing in an ongoing way with the Holy Spirit because there's been so much in the past few weeks about the Holy Spirit and the lessons. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and John and I will process it and then we'll do a service. And uh, turn and uh, lift up every voice and sing to page 218. No reason why we can't do something. I can go up. And I just happen to like this one. So I'll start it out in the back and y'all can follow me. <laughs>
surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promise, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. Mm -hmm. 
Our first reading is from Acts. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man in Macedonia pleading with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace. The following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was the place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next is a responsive reading at the asterisk. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Our second reading is from Revelation. In the spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light. Its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who were written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruits, producing its fruits each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no night of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. check because we actually have two Gospels in our insert for today, but we're going to focus on the first one. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to Judas, not Iscariot, those who love me will keep my word and my Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. 
Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I, and now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Is it still warm in here? Yeah. It feels warm to me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to thee, Lord, and glorify you in all life. Ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There are actually a, a number of things that I wanted to kind of touch on. But I can't touch on all of them because there's, there's not enough time. And um, folks who are in a congregation in an Episcopal church begin to count the minutes when you get to a certain point <laughs> in the sermon. Um, not that any of you would do that, I know, because <laughs> you are enthralled in my Absolutely. preaching. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Last week was a really difficult week for me because we had to replace a major air conditioning and heat unit in our house. And if you've ever done that, it's very challenging. It's challenging because those guys speak a language you don't. You know, who are doing the air conditioning stuff. And uh, most of them had to go to school for two years to be able to call themselves uh, certified air conditioning specialists. So they know all those things. And so first we had to deal with confronting the issue, putting the denial aside and saying, all right, it's 40 years old, of course it needs to be replaced. <laughs> I mean, there's something in human beings we just kind of forget about the fact that um, these kind of things come up. Because we don't want to deal with it. I didn't want to deal with replacing the HVAC unit. Um, And it's in a very dark, dismal part of the house. Dark, spooky, bugs, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, I have a friend who does air conditioning. He he helped me out. Um, couldn't help me much with the price, but I could trust him. I I knew if he was telling me something. It, wouldn't to gouge me was to help me get the job done. Cooler, hotter. Relatively speaking, we focus so much on how comfortable we are physically that it might be that we're missing some things <coughs> in our lives. When I was growing up, We didn't have central air, you know. How did we survive? 
Because obviously we did, and yet now it's something that we have to have. And I, you know, I like having air conditioning. And I like having heat in the winter. And, uh, but when we're confronted with that immediate expense, <coughs> then we begin to shake a little bit. Really? You know? First you do the, okay, I accept that the HVAC unit is bad. And then you have to accept what the new one's going to cost you. <laughs> you know? So there are stages of acceptance that are going on with this whole thing. You know? So I'm finally at that stage of acceptance for actually going to get this brand new unit. And I learned a heck of a lot more about air conditioning than I ever wanted to know. <laughs> but I was an educated by it. And that, and that helped. But I, I take some things for granted. And I'm embarrassed by that to a degree. I think most human beings, um, we have a hard time staying in the midst of the things that we ought to stay in the midst of, especially if they're unpleasant. You know, seeing somebody you haven't seen for a long time and saying, wait a minute, you know, I need to touch bases with this person. It's been too long since we talked. You know, people are terribly lonely out there. They really are. They're terribly lonely. And we have a remedy for that. It's called us. We are the women. If we can make it happen. If we can connect people up with folks who will help them have life, share their life. And then a lot of churches, you know, I think we put a lot of store in the church doing something. Well, the church is going to have a revival. Is that the same as we are going to have a revival? Maybe. But when we are talking about, about things like a revival, the assumption is that the bottom fell out of something. Otherwise, you wouldn't need a revival. How many of you been to a revival? Raise your hand if you've been to. Most all of us have, have been to a revival, and they're very, you know, very powerful. There's, a, depending on the uh, the church that you're with, there's a lot of singing, uh, typically with guitars. I used to do that in the Baptist church. Played my guitar, sang, or a reasonable facsimile. Um, but I think that if we remember who we are in the world, the Holy Spirit will come at us like a river. It'll come at us like a river. The Holy Spirit will come at us like a river. Anybody here ever felt the Holy Spirit raise your hand? Cool. Because <laughs> once you feel it and you recognize it for what it is, you'll never be happy until you feel it again. Not entirely. Because there's something about the Holy Spirit and being touched by the Holy Spirit that reinforces to us everything we believe or think we believe. And these past few Sundays have been about the Holy Spirit. But something else came up in my 
in my research, and I'm gonna do my best to talk about this without offending anybody. Um, on occasion, in, in South Dakota at the reservation, we would have people come through who wanted to observe the sun dance. Where they could come in, they could attend, they could be there for everything that we did, but they couldn't take pictures. Um, that's kind of hard for some folks, not being able to take pictures. So sometimes they would uh, sneak around to get pictures. That's not a good idea, sneaking around on an Indian reservation, because we are the best sneakers there ever were. And that's the truth, you know. We lived in the forest, tracked animals, did all those things. And occasionally we'd catch somebody, and back in the days of film, we would just take the film out. Uh, but then we got into digital stuff, so we were left to uh, find other ways to deal with the images. Typically a hammer or an ax would be very well. <laughs> when folks have been warned more than once that something like that's going to happen, you're amazed that they're amazed that it happens. But uh, Indian people take the Sundance uh, ceremony very serious. And there's a, a, quite an emphasis on water during the Sundance, lack of water. You can't drink any water for four days while you're dancing. By the third day, you're asking yourself, why the heck you were doing all this to begin with? Because you're thirsty. All you can think of is water. Cold, icy, water. Or better yet, Watermelon. <laughs> Watermelon with, with the water dripping off of it because it's chilled. Ice cream cones. This is what you're thinking about. You're out there, it's 116 degrees, you don't know how you're going to get through it. And oh yeah, on top of that, you're really, really thirsty. So you begin to appreciate things like water. And there was actually uh, a reference to it in our readings for today. But one of the things that came up is the New Age movement. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with people who, who want to do New Age stuff. But the problem is, that they make a, a assumptions about what they believe and transfer those assumptions to Indian country. They think that because, well, they think that Indians are New Agers. And the truth is that uh, Indian people have been Old Agers since old was old. <laughs> you know? Thousands of years, Indian people have been believing things the same way. Um, but it, it also speaks to how we feel about different forms of belief other than our own. I'm a bicultural guy. I live in two worlds, Indian, not Indian. I'm okay with that, not everybody is. But there are plenty of folks who are afraid to be who they are. That is so sad, you know, it's really, really sad that you can't call yourself an Indian even though you know you have Indian blood. You don't feel like you can call yourself an Indian. It doesn't come from Indian people, it comes from non-Indian people. Um, so if, if you are into things like crystals, some Indian tribes may use crystals, others well, some Indian tribes use sand, others don't. 
there are a whole number of things that Indian people use in their in their ceremonies. And, and what I'm also saying is you got to be careful out there what you think you believe in. You got to be careful. You know, you can you can uh, get pulled in directions that are dark. And there are folks out there who are who are waiting for you to show up. We don't have to worry about it most of the time, but occasionally it will raise its head. So the lesson for me in, in the readings today is that the river of life is available to everybody. You don't have to be special to drink from that river. You just got to be somebody who loves Jesus Christ. That's the bottom line. That's what it says right here. It's telling us how to love other people, too. Good stuff. So, love your neighbor, don't make assumptions. And always remember the water. Water is the essence of life. That's why it's so important. Amen. Amen. Please stand with me and profess your faith according to the Nicene Creed on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. I'll say this again. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, and Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten or not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and that was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Our prayers are form four on page 388 of the book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve for the common good. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against, sin against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have done, we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry to be humbly repent. Lord, have mercy on us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins to our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. So we're going to say... Uh, part of the uh, Eucharistic Thanksgiving on page 363. We, set, we, we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, ascension, we offer you all our gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people, the symbol of you, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may truthfully receive this holy sacrament today in our hearts and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Amen. Amen. And uh, let's say uh, a Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. Take a breath, uh, some breathing first. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the 
And now that the Lord be with you, bless your path, keep you safe, teach your heart and the hearts of your children. Be with us as we endeavor to live the best life that we can in Jesus' name. For we ask these things for his sake. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.